Welcome back, everybody. Today, we are going to start really jumping into the 2008 format, and we are going to cover an Amphros Brongzong deck. Now, this deck ended up making top 32 at the World Championships. I believe this is Drew Gritsky's list. Um, Drew, like I, I said in the, the previous video, um, Drew borrowed a lot of lists from players or would be sent lists, and he uh that was very common for him he, he fully acknowledges it so i don't know who exactly came up with the deck or the concept but it is a really strong concept and it's a really strong anti-meta deck um generally speaking um the two biggest decks in the 2008 format were gardevoir blade and empoleon now essentially bronzon did very well against gardevoir blade um being psychic and then having that coding attack the deck relied very heavily on powers cursed alloy was awesome and then pain amplifier would get you a lot of bonus chip damage in there as well all on a single price and the advantage of bronzong is that you can put pressure on your opponent with absolutely zero energy invested in it incredibly strong against any deck that is very reliant on powers and then um Amphros was very good against empoleon being that lightning type and then having that cluster bolt for 70 with the ability for a one hit knockout with lake boundary in play um which brings us to the next point where the deck would play two copies of lake boundary um just to have the one hit knockouts on things like gardevoir glade and polion now that alone makes it a very strong deck in the meta but what you really see is a complete Beyond just having a good type advantage against the format or against those two big decks, you also saw a lot of synergy between the two, where essentially Amphros is jamming uh, Pokebody would put 10 damage on your each of your opponent's Pokemon every time they used a supporter. Not only was this great for chip damage, but this comboed especially well with Bronzong's Pain Amplifier and Cursed Alloy, where essentially you were just getting a ton of chip damage in and then that Pain Amplifier turn after turn after turn just that chip damage really started adding up. And then in the later stages of the game, it was very easy to be taking one hit knockouts, even with um, average attack damage of like 60 and 70. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and just jump into the deck here, start talking about some of the cards. Now, I'm going to say when I deck build, I a lot of the decks we cover on the channel, we've done a lot of testing and um i i don't I, I hate to use the term upgrading but a lot of um hindsight on different decks to really come up with the most optimized list form i'm going to say i did very little to this deck to change it from the 2008 variation of it um, i tested the deck a lot i played a lot of games with it but generally the deck list in 2008 was pretty darn close to perfect i'll cover a couple of the changes as we're talking about the cards here but it's a very straightforward concept with a very, very solid list. One of the things I mentioned in my 2008 discussion video that I found kind of interesting is the Pokemon lineup plays very similar to Empoleon, while the energy lineup and the supporter lineup play a little bit closer to Gardevoir. So starting off here, we play a 3-1 Bronzor line. I'm going to say I think you can do a lot to... I think there's pros and cons to both of these. And I think one of the biggest surprises from 2008 for me is how players just never got in the habit of splitting these lines. And I really do think you could argue about any split with this. I think you could go 2-2. Two, two. I think you could argue 1-3. I think you could even make an argument to go 4 on this one. Essentially, um, this one has the better attack with Hypnosis. And this one has the better resistance with the Psychic. So this one is not going to get um, one hit KO'd by Gardevoir, which I think is very important um, if you are playing from behind and you need to buy yourself a turn. So we play the full 4-4 here. Once again, Bronzong is just so incredibly strong. In any sort of power-based matchup, it is um, that Cursed Alloy is just going to really, really essentially guarantee us cheap prizes on the bench. Um, but just that <clears throat> um, comboing with Ampharos here. Uh, the coding can also be a very strong attack. If you're using coding, it's going to be really hard for your opponent to one-hit KO Bronzong. In many situations, it's going to be a two-hit KO at best. Now, we play a 3-2-3 Ampharos line here. Um, I'm going to say, in my opinion, 
the the pop seven art is considerably better but than the secret wonders art but once again 100 percent my opinion on that um so as far as the actual amphros goes i'm gonna say a lot of games when you hit in the early stages of a game it's very hard to avoid playing supporters but in the later stages of the game it's decks can usually play very well without playing supporters or not be as reliant on them. So how early you get the Ampharos in play will make matchups feel much different. If you get a very early Ampharos, like a turn one, turn two Ampharos, games feel almost unlosable at times, where if it's a lot more painful if you don't hit an Ampharos till like the middle or the late stages of a game. I'm going to say it's not like, oh man, I can't win this game if I don't get an Ampharos in the first three turns of it, but it just, it feels... The game feels much harder if you don't get that early Ampharos. Now, I'm also going to note that um, Cluster Bolt, you can also get some additional chip damage in there. That's one of the things the deck excels at. It just has so much chip damage. It's not a necessarily, it can be a very much like, I'll just smack you in the face type of deck, um, especially trying to take advantage of those weaknesses with Lake Boundary. But at the same time, it has so much chip damage. The 2008 format has very, very little healing in it and very little efficient healing. So things like Ampharos and the Bronzong are just so strong. 2-2 Claydol, this is very, very standard. Um, and then I I added one Chatot to the deck. The list on PTCG Archive was not playing Chatot. Absolutely shocked me. I, I, there's no reason not to play Chatot in a, one of Chatot in almost every single deck in the format. Very commonly, you're going to see decks you use that four Call Energy, um, four BBs, four Roseannes, and that one Chatot just to guarantee that consistency there. It's almost always worth that one spot. Um, as heading into the supporter lineup here, we play four BBs, one Celios. I prefer this even without playing level X's in the deck, or EX's in the deck, or level X's. I think the BBs is better. We always want to get a slightly better cosmic power off, and very rarely, um, is that ever going to hurt us having to put a card back. The counter argument is, is under like a psychic lock, we don't really want to use BBs to put a dead card back into our deck with the uh, chance of drawing it again. Four Roseannes, uh, great for getting our basics, great for searching out the energy. Three Steven's Advice. The actual will play very large benches in this format, especially if they don't think you play Dustnor. Now, I'm going to say I do. I think if you really wanted to, you could play Dustnor in this deck. Um, go like a 2-1-2 Ampharos um, with a 1-0-1 Dustnor and then play the fourth Candy. Very easily do that. Um, just generally, I would say most of the time this deck is not going to play Dust Norm. You almost, you actually almost want your opponent to have a large bench, and you almost want them to um, be getting that chip damage. And even sometimes when it's advantageous to shuffle something back in, it's not always the smart game decision to do so. Steven's advice, just a great draw card. Two copycat once again. Um, Copycat's all right in this format. I find in a lot of situations, hand sizes are going to be around six because of Claydol, which isn't a bad copycat, but occasionally you will get those 9, 10, 11 card hands if they, Steven's advice after a Claydol. So um, I do think you'll find a lot of advantages with copycat. Um, the one Celios that we already talked about, three rare candy. There's not, there is uh, Omastar in this format, but there's not a ton of de-evolving. I think you could get away with a 4-1 or a 3-1-3 three, three with 4 candy, I think that's fine. Um, maybe that's a little bit faster. I think this is just a little bit more consistent, especially if you have to try to set it up under some sort of power lock. Um, two warp point in the deck. Um, the list on PTCG Archive played 3. I don't think 3 is necessarily bad. Um, I'll find myself in a lot of situations where sometimes I don't want to knock out the active. I want to get a cheap shot on something on the bench or try to warp point them into something they would have to retreat, put them behind on those energy drops. But essentially, yeah, War Point's just a really good, um, it can be a very good cessation counter as well. Two Lake Boundary, two Windstorm. I think you can do a lot to play around with this number. If you are running into a lot of um, Crystal Beach cessation crystal decks, I do think you can play three Windstorm in this. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think if you're not seeing as many Gardevoir and Napoleon decks, you could go like one Lake Boundary, three Windstorm. I think you could just find room, play a third Windstorm in here. A lot of different options with it. Deck plays one Night Maintenance as well. I actually do think you could get away with not playing Night Maintenance in this if you were playing very carefully. 
um, just because you do have a total of four and three, so you do have a total of seven attackers, with a realistic chance that you're probably going to give up a chat tot at some point in the game. Um, yeah, the night maintenance is never bad. I think it makes you feel a little bit safer, but I do think you'd get away with not playing it. Um, for the energy lineup, very similar to Gardevoir here. We just go four call, four double rainbow. Um, call is just so essential to increase your odds of getting those good starts. Four double rainbow combo very well, not only Bronzong for the coating, but the Ampharos as well for the cluster bolt. I am going to be up front and say I don't remember off the top of my head if discarding the double rainbow for the cluster bolt nets you that bonus damage or not. It's been a while. I've actually not had that come up in the games I've tested. Three scramble energies. Um, this is a deck that can very easily play from behind. And worst case scenario, it's usually a colorless that you can use in combination with double rainbow energy to meet your requirements anyways. One cyclone. This, um, just for a lot of the same reasons, warp point is good in the deck. The cyclone energy can be good as well. It's usually pretty easy to play that down, especially if you're just using something like a Bronzong. You just want to get something out of the active spot. Um, very easy to throw a Cyclone Energy under it. Also a Pseudo Cessation Crystal Counter. And then we play three Lightning Energy. Um, this is okay. I think you get by with two Lightning and then play like a Psychic. Or if you really want to be risky, play like two Lightning and you can play like a second Cyclone, a Warp. Um, something like that. Generally speaking, um, the Cluster Bolt, if you do want to discard all the Lightning, you don't want to have multiple Lightning attached to the Ampharos. You essentially just want to be discarding a single energy for it, like a um, one double rainbow or one lightning. You don't want to have to discard like a double rainbow and a lightning off of it. So I do think there is reasons to not play, to play another basic energy. So you could like Roseanne's for a psychic and attach it or something like that, where it's it's not just the lightning energies. Um, I just think there's a couple different ways you could play that. Other than that, though, the deck is, it's a really, really good format counter. It's great against Gardevoir, it's great against Napoleon, but at the exact same time too, it's going to play very well against a lot of, um, basically every deck in the format, since so many decks in the format rely on Claydol for setup and consistency, and the format in general is very power heavy. Um, the deck will usually plays pretty good with a slow start or a fast start, but you will notice the deck is much better the earlier you get the Ampharos in play. But other than that, that's just going to wrap up the Ampharos Bronzong deck profile. I hope you enjoyed the video, and um, we're just going to continue to jump into the 2008 format. It's been, I've had a lot of fun playing this the last few days, and we're just going to keep going with it. I hope to see you in the next video.